lucky. You have gacha luck. I don't have gacha luck, unfortunately. <laughs> I opened a few and I didn't get any at all. So I was like, yeah, I guess I have to pay for them myself, I guess. I guess I've got to pay the 1,600 for them instead of the, well, what Off could have the been. the cusp kind of ruins here or the seeming very sort of like usual to you, Stu? I mean, they've gone for the, um, is it empowerment on the Ezreal there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the empowerment on the Ezreal is kind of the... Oh, the snipe in the end from the Jace in the mid lane. Really, really smart play there from the mid laner, but it's going to get ganked by the Hecarim. It's going to die by the Hecarim as well, since he doesn't have a flash, but a trade kill in the end in the mid lane. But yeah, Killing as a rune like Conqueror, for example, you don't have the same sort of, I guess, pressure in the, in the mid game, but empowerment definitely gives you a lot of early game damage and juicy seems to be in huge trouble here as the ultimate comes through from hecarim and that is another kill over to almighty capybari and they're going to try and get a plate here in the bot lane they're not well, going to get it uh, after some time as you can see hecarim going for another gank in the mid lane jace doesn't have a flash available has nothing else left but the jace trade kill in the end for the jace really good knockback back into the hecarim and since he got the kill as well Ooh. as the ultimate Ooh. there from lydia the flash forward as well getting another kill oh supports even roaming up as well now so all the action is happening in the mid lane Why? um i mean kiss kiss is one of the the best mid laners uh, that has come around for quite some time now in wild rift as it looks like there's an engage with the corky package in mid lane and the two of the members get completely caught out as well just before this time and that means that the, uh, the rift herald is now going to be up and available and the, there's a bit of an opposite effect up in that baron lane with oh. jacks against the camille but we could see the lily getting caught out here hecarim gets pushed away from the set what a nice play there on the side of ba brilliant baby bus they have definitely earned their name with bus because clearly hecarim needed a bus to catch back up to the <laughs> Lilia there, uh, but was unable to because there was no buzz on the schedule. They could see a few turret platings being taken down here. It is a 4v4 oh, under the Dragon Lane turret now. So again, a kill for uh, Zaya taking out the Hecarim. And then we have a bit of a barrage onto the Nautilus as well. Nautilus goes down also. So that is a 2-0 trade for BBB. Uh, Sahara is looking pretty low as well, but they do manage to get the kill. Double kill onto Jace and a triple kill onto Kiss Kiss. The Mwah. clash, uh, the, oh, sorry. We do go and blend into two games. The Baron Ling first hit turret, the mid lane and the dragon lane as well but it's not quite done yet. The Jax is still harassing the Nautilus with the help of Lilia and then comes through the status, but it's not gonna be enough. Oh, Flopsy gets the shield, but is it gonna be enough? Hecarim going in as well, but it's still nobody closing out a kill. Corky oh, just doesn't the know that the <laughs> Corky didn't know that Set was there and he was already focusing somebody else, but it's already going into the favor of BBB. Oh. So we could see another team fight there because BBB already have one of the Drakes as well. So that's going to be a bit more of a priority for themselves. But Hecarim pushing the Jax out of the turret and feeding it up to the, I believe it was the uh, Hecarim. Yes, Hecarim got the kill as well, I believe. I, I thought it was the- Able to the survive for a long amount of time, allow for the likes of Zaya to rotate around the map to get into the fight. Hecarim ulti completely misses again. The damage is trying to come through. The sleep from the Lily as well. The burst damage in the end from that death cap as the first item. But they need to be careful though because it's only a three versus five. Kiss Kiss is not even in the fight. He's here now. Maybe he's gonna clean up the fight. He gets one kill. Can he get two onto the Nautilus? He can. Can he chase and get any more? I'm sure Ezra is going to be able to dash away from this one. Or maybe not. The flash forward. Another triple kill for Kiss Kiss. Okay, I mean, uh, 10,000 gold behind. Maybe they need a pick like this in the bot lane. The problem is they've got all four members, all five members in this bot lane. Yes, they're going to kill Jax, but they're going to lose the Baron on the mid lane, on the bot lane. To be honest, though, these Baron buffs minions are going to do so much work, though, in every single lane. They're going to try and get another kill. They do get the shutdown, actually, onto Kiss Kiss. And maybe this is an opportunity here for them to do a lot of work in this fight. The Lydia is a little bit exposed by herself. Another kill over to Almighty Capybari, And maybe they can try and turn things around. They do have to still try and defend this tower. They do have to be extremely careful. Zai gets stunned as well. Ooh. And that's another kill for Almighty Capybari. Oh. An ace 
but almighty Capabari. A few We've misplays there by BBB, but they still do have that Baron Nasher buff for another 35 seconds. And here comes Jay's coming through again with his already decade of kills. Is he going to pick up a few more before he dies? The status does come through, but Camille is putting some pressure onto the Jax as well. Able to escape with such little help. Well, but instead they were able to defend it. They were able to get a few kills as well. But as you mentioned, with this Dragon Soul now be enough, the Ocean Soul could go in the hands here of BBB. Ooh. The ultimate comes through, but the Dragon Soul is claimed. And here comes a team fight. A big ultimate into the back line here for set. The uh, Camille is doing all she can to try and kill the Zaya, but there's not enough damage in the end. This is going to be an ace for BBB in the end. They they can push down the mid lane and they can end the game right now it's going to be a quick and easy one zero here for bbb a few little misplays a few like a few over missed um misplays i should say uh, by bbb but overall a very strong <clears throat> performance by them in game one Absolutely. I mean, that Jace is definitely going to be something I reckon that they're going to be uh, banning off straight away in game two, to be honest, because who would have thought Kiss Kiss was going to go so hard on that Jace? I mean, it was like teen kills, a very early aggression, just amazing damage coming from the Jace, as you can see there, 11 kills to four MVP as well, and rightfully so. It's going to go up into the Baron lane against the Garen. Really strong pick, really, for the Yasuoken really you look to try and stack the grass beyond dying if he is going to go for that tank build exactly. rather than well he doesn't have a mana pool but he uses health more <laughs> than anything else for his abilities so he needs to make sure he doesn't spam his abilities Ooh. over and over again or he's just going to keep going lower and lower on health like he is at the moment and just keep on taking so much damage yeah hecarine coming in here as a saving grace uh, from the uh nautilus because we saw nautilus try and bait the lock on to uh, game one early game because we were already seeing the likes of kiss kiss on like four kills at this point it seems so now that the the dragon and the rift herald are up i think we'll see a little bit more of engage but again hecarim really showing how that fear just can push you from safety and being a squishy champion like the syndra and then Having this poke from the, the Zeri as well, he's just doing great bits on the side of all Mighty Cover Barrier Elites. They've managed to pick up a kill for themselves, so they are not down and out just yet. But Yasuo putting on some massive pressure onto the Nautilus, uh, not Nautilus, sorry, the Alistair to take him out of the fight. Uh, but still, he's not done. Garen's going one, uh, 1v3 at the moment, and he's not <laughs> doing too bad, but he does get rooted and destroyed at the end. But fair play to him with that much sustain against a 1v3. You've got to keep it commendable. That fight looked like it lasted a century, to be honest with you. There were so many fights happening across the board. We also saw Feko diving in into the back line as well of uh, the game. But can they get anything more from it? The Yasuo is even trying to go onto the Dragon at the moment. And he's just feeling so much confidence right now onto this pick. Hecarim needs to be careful because the rest of the team is also here trying to help out as well. The Nautilus ulti comes in, the flash forward as well. But Hecarim's like, hey, I can also Ooh. jump over the wall as well, buddy. I don't have flash, but who needs a flash when you have a flying horse coming at you? Whereas Nautilus is also going to go down <laughs> as well. The knockup misses from the Yasuo and also the stun as well from Syndra also missing uh -oh. in the end. So a few events he's missing here from BDB, but it doesn't really matter in the end. A few more kills going over to them. A two for two trade. And first... trying to take that uh, Baron Lane first here turret as well, but it just didn't quite come into fruition. Again, the silence coming through with the spin to win. The slam dunk comes through as well, right under the turret, and he still manages to survive. But is Nautilus going to stop that survival? It looks like no it's... go Jones for Yasuo. Again, a bit of a messy game, it seems like, across the board. There's so much action happening. There's so many fights happening as well. Kaiser using the ultimate now to go on to the Alistar. Alistar really has nowhere to go at this point, but he does have a lot of tankiness in the end. The double stun, though. The ultimate onto the Zeri, and that's another kill over to Kiss Kiss, and another kill we'll over... Take it down and eliminate it that kaiser who is great damage output on the side of bbb but again another song and dance in that mid lane 2v1 snooze onto the hecarim is it going to be enough to catch him out? He as the baron nasher is up i don't think we're going to see a play for it until we see some more numbers fall on the side of all my capabari elites 
You see in Juicy here, unfortunately completely caught out. The Ignite might be enough in the end as well. It's actually the Hecarim that's going to be enough in the end to take that kill. And now they're looking to try and run down the jungler. The Lydia is going to get ultied. The Silence and suddenly two kills have gone over to the side of almighty capybari and now they're gonna try and take away this baron there's no jungle left alive right now for bbb but they do still have kiss kiss trying to steal it with the syndra unfortunately it hasn't been quite the case here as you said earlier Stu. but there could be a barrage onto this mid lane turret but there is the knock up the airborne onto the hacker rim and it goes down so once again, Kiss Kiss, bang, bang, Vladimir getting a trade into the back line, though. And again, a double kill onto the Zeri. So uh, a few trades going on here. It's currently a 1-4 trade on the so side. Anyway, of so really, it's just going to be used as a gold uh, a gold objective, it seems, here on the side of BBB. But we are getting a big engage here. It's why 4v1 onto... I need to hope for something here. Looking for the flank here from the Hecarim. Hecarim is in such a great position right now. Needs to just be patient. I don't think he was patient enough. Maybe he should have hit the go button a little bit beforehand because this Nautilus is going to take a lot of damage before he dies. Doesn't even they die. Try and burst down this Baron before the Hecarim even comes back alive. They have so much burst damage thanks to this Kaiser. The Garen's going to try uh -oh. and do a lot of work. The Smite needs to come Ooh. in. It does come in in the end. But the side of Almighty Capybara are doing so much damage into the back line the vladimir uh -oh. getting a double kill in the back line in the end kiss kiss trying to do enough poke damage here comes all those teleports Triple TP. literally everybody and their dog is in that elder drake camp and they are going to try and contest it but nautilus is here to try and keep off the garret as well they take down the elder dragon onto the side of bbb so cleaning up this last team fight which could potentially be is going to be 10 times easier thanks to that Elder Dragon in buff. the mid lane, but Hecarim actually dying there seemed to be the difference for Almighty Capybara because the Elder Drake was up in 30 seconds. They just needed to be a little bit more patient here, Almighty Capybara, but they weren't in the end. The Baron buff went in favor of BBB. The Elder Drake went in favor of BBB, and so will the second game as well. 2-0 now for the side of BBB, taking us to match point in our first series of the day. Yep, I mean, they didn't play as clean as the last game. We both would probably agree there, Stu, but they definitely still managed to take the win. Yeah, I mean, with them having quite a few squishy uh, champions on their team, like the Lucian, like the Varus, uh, Lilia is particularly quite squishy as well, depending on how well you can get ahead with can the come and, Oh no, Alistar's gone back to base, has left oh. Varus all by himself, and oh no, it looks like an absolute disaster here uh, for the side of Almighty Capybari. The Lilia's now also alone as well. Ekrim's on full HP, he can just run down the Lilia. It's going to try and go back around, though. It's probably going to survive oh. as well, which is really, really smart. Alistar actually flashing forward, trying to kill the Corky, but in the end, maybe now she will drop it in that mid. I'm not too sure if it will do enough damage, though. There's a lot of damage coming in onto the Aurelian uh -oh. Soul here. And will it be enough to actually kill the Lucian? <gasps> it's not going to be! The Lucian actually doesn't get the kill onto Aurelian Soul, but Aurelian Soul is basically uh -oh. on one HP. Yeah, there's no escape in this time, buddy, unfortunately. He tried his best. But he is going to go down in the end. Even use the flash as well to try and escape. But didn't in the end. But meanwhile, there's a fight happening in mid lane. The Nautilus also stays alive on 1 HP. Lydia tried to flash forward. Ooh. Actually gets a kill onto Hecarim instead. And the Garen is still here. Meanwhile, this whole time, Yone is pushing up into the bot lane. Shut down. Hey, what did he, what did he pick in game one? I can't remember what he picked in game one. But it doesn't even matter. Really nice flash there from Kiss Kiss to be able to escape there in the end. Nautilus trying to ulti back in to try and do a bit of damage but unfortunately at the moment it looks like Nautilus might be the one that gets completely caught out the Hecarim trying to dive onto the back line the Varus trying to flash away but you're kind of flashing into the fight buddy what? there's nothing really going to happen there the Corky package coming in as well that's a double Ooh. kill right now for Hecarim and a double kill as well be careful because for... Lily is on the rotate as well but second guesses it she should have stuck to her guns but if she didn't she could have lost this mid lane turret as well as we see BBB going for assault on the mid lane turret. 
This is going to look very dangerous. Look at the Iridium Soul. Boom. That starts from above. Iridium Soul to lands down in the mid lane. The mid lane tower is going to go in the side of BBB here. The Lydia is trying to do as much as possible to deal the damage. The double AD carry on the back line as well. Corky flashing in, but getting caught by the Varus ultimate in the end. And actually, it's a dust Ooh, shot. back in the base. And whilst everyone is dead... They're going to try and take a fight around this Baron. The TP comes in from the Yone. Can the get over the wall? He cannot. But does the team fight go in favor of BBB? Do they take oh. down the Lydia? They take down one. They lose the Hecarim, though, in response. The Corky package comes in. What the hell uh -oh. is... What, what is Corky doing? He's playing super aggressive. He's still alive, though, somehow. I don't know how he's alive through all of that. But one HP on to Lucian. The Corky... Be, be very careful now. Down goes the... Uh, Baron Lane first hit turret as well as we see the Alistair being a very aggressive onto the Yone, but a little bit of a misplay there by the Alistair taking a lot of the shots, but Corky takes the kill onto the Lucian, dredge line onto Alistair trying to keep him away from the Varus. Varus goes down again and Lilia is on the run. They both have four legs, but Hecarim is just too fast as they are looking to pick off the Alistair once again. He tries In this to game, it's less about Kiss Kiss but it's more about the rest of the team. You know, the Corky and the Nautilus doing incredibly well as, oh my God, the Hecarim. Oh my God, it's it's absolute cinema. It's absolute perfection for BBB. The Hecarim fear into the Redding Soul ulti, into the extra CC from the Nautilus. Ooh. That was absolutely beautiful for BBB. What a beautiful combo to end this game and end this series. <laughs> Yeah, we got Nautilus taking flag from both the Nexus and the Inhibitor there, but it was just like felt the sweet spot that he wasn't going to get hit by it, just as his team coming through to take down the Nexus in game three, making it a easy 3-0 for BBB, probably the most contested out of all of the rounds against Dormind Kavari, but BBB do go through to the finals tomorrow as well. So well played to a brilliant baby bus, even if we don't still understand the name, but GG, well played. I have to get some.